Mitsubishi. They make rally cars. The Evo. It's pretty much the only Mitsubishi anyone cares about. Sorry not sorry Eclipse lovers. Back in the 1990s Mitsubishi had a car called the Lancer. It was rubbish. It was just a boring four-door saloon. It also had an estate version I think. Mitsubishi wanted to go rallying with it. So the fifth generation Lancer got some modifications done to it and turned into the iconic Mitsubishi Evolution, or Evo for short. And it was taken to victory at the hands of Mr. Tommy Mackinnon, who was uh, a dab hand behind the wheel. Makes sense. He was from Finland, and all the best drivers come from Finland. That's undisputed. So, Mitsubishi tried again and made the Evo 2, which also was um, driven by Tommy Mackinnon and also won the World Rally Championship. They made the Evo 3, which was driven by Tommy Mackinnon and won the World Rally Championship. You can get where this is going. Now, I think they did this, and I'm not exaggerating here, six times on the trot. And on the sixth generation, they actually gave Tommy Mackinnon his own special edition Evo, the Evo 6 Tommy Mackinnon edition. Which is my favourite version of the Evo. It's the best looking of them as well. The Evos were incredibly advanced. They had, you know, SORC control, active yaw control, and loads of different acronyms that I have no idea what they mean. And they'd always be racing against Impressors. These two were basically like rivals that were pretending to hate each other but actually just really loved having a playmate pretty cool actually anyway they kept this going for 10 generations until finally in 2010 after the final evo was made the fq 400 evo 10 oh god that's a mouthful they stopped making evos which is a shame it's a real shame at least Subaru kept making some version of the Impreza, even if the modern WRX is absolutely god-awful. Although saying that, at least it means that the Evo's reputation hasn't been slandered. And makes a change. What makes this car special is that for the first time ever on this channel, the body mods actually change the performance. The Evo has two body kits that you can unlock in the event. One of which is... Well, it ups the performance a little bit and increases the handling rating and braking rating. So, you know, that's all good. The second a bit does that even more so. So this is actually a worthwhile event for you to complete. Just to improve your Evo. In a straight line, this is very very quick I've got it in fully tuned mode here and it does 260 is what I can get it to right now before I run out of road it does slow down quite a bit at the top end so I think it needs a little bit more balancing other than that though oh well, there we go 275 miles an hour very very quick for a car Supposedly only worth 210 grand. Also check out my serial number. One of the first 100 Mitsubishi Evo 10s ever made. Proud moment for me. Because I actually give a damn about serial numbers. It is very much a tuner car. And this is no more obvious anywhere else than in the corners. It turns like it's got a drift set up understeering wildly like I was doing 80 and already it felt like the front end was trying to give up in pain hitting the wall again it's genuinely a car I do not like driving so while I do have a really really rare Mitsubishi Evo 
I am not going to use this thing very much, which means just like every other really, really rare car that's ever existed, for the most part, it's just going to sit and rot. Which is exactly what it feels like has already happened to it. Because it understeers like a pig, and it also feels like a pig's eaten its steering shaft. Steering column, I mean. Drive shaft, steering column. I get the two. I don't even know. And with that information in mind, you can understand why I'm mildly scared for the circuit. Oh well. What's the point in having the car if you can't use it? Right, off the line. Here we go. Keep near to the curbs. Try not to understeer too much. And pray. Nice-ish. It's clean. Oh, come on. Rock kink. Oh, that's understeer. Right, down the downhill section over the bridge. Brake. Oh, okay. 36.46. Two seconds slower than the brilliant M3 we had yesterday. Great. Really good. It's a free car, so obviously I recommend you get it. Especially since you're never going to be able to get it again if you miss it. But if you want an actually good car for around what it's worth, 210 grand, or at least that's its in-game value, it's not worth 210 grand by any stretch of the imagination. What are your options? Well, Ford GT, Dodge Viper, McLaren 570S, Corvette um, C6, no, C7 Z06. Hell, even a Bentley Continental if you want a four-seater. So, um, there, there's your answer. If you want a good car for around the price of this car, look at all your options. Probably I'd suggest you get the GT, though. It's the cheapest, has the best pedigree, pedigree and it's my favourite, so that's the one I'm suggesting. So on that bombshell, I will see you tomorrow with a Ford GT. There's a plot twist. <laughs>